from your point of view, what are the impacts of climate change on marine life? Um, well, there's actually quite a lot because the, first, with global warming, we're warming the oceans, and that's one of the big reasons why we're seeing all these diseases in corals and in the marine life around it, is that those organisms are really adapted to a very narrow range of temperature in the, in the tropics, and we've actually warmed that quite a bit. So a lot of the heat that we're not feeling in the atmosphere, it's actually being absorbed by the ocean. Um, so that's one of the big things you see. And as the coral dies off, you start to get all this cascading effects of other marine organisms. You also have, what we often don't hear as much about, is something called ocean acidification. When CO2 from, comes from the atmosphere and is absorbed by the ocean, it kind of causes this reaction that actually makes the pH of the ocean more acidic. And that's really, it becomes too acidic for organisms like coral and fish. So that's even beyond warming, we have this kind of weird chemistry effect that really is impacting coral reefs in such a dramatic way. What about the impact of hurricanes on marine life? Well, they're really dramatic. Um, we see it all over the Caribbean. These hurricanes come in, these enormous storms, and they break off big chunks of coral. And those pieces of coral now act like big wrecking balls hitting the rest of the reef. So I've seen it in Jamaica, off the coast of Mexico. You see it all up through the Caribbean. You know, reefs that used to look like this, they look like a wrecking ball has gone through. They're just reduced to rubble. And then, of course, you don't have the incredible biodiversity and marine life that coral reefs are known for. So what can we do? <laughs> um, well, the first and most important is, of course, global. I mean, we all have to reduce and, and actually eliminate fossil fuel emissions. Um, right now, the, the um, atmosphere concentration of CO2 is at 415 parts per million. That's the highest it's been in human history. Hasn't been that high for 30 million years. So it's really, we're doing something incredibly dramatic and globally we need to act. But more locally, the way that some of these island communities can adapt is to really bring back some of those ecosystems things like the mangrove um, f f swamps around the edges and wetlands, they help buffer the storms. They absorb those storm surges. They prevent the amazing, like, you get this incredible rain on land, rushes the silt down, and instead of that silt flowing out to sea and covering and smothering the coral reefs, mangroves trap it, wetlands trap it. But we have to be willing to really restore those natural ecosystems to get those benefits.